I love that. I love this. Oh my gosh. God is so good. Like, I, I just, I can't even, I'm just filled with so much gratitude today. I would love to hear, like, so have you guys, those who, those who have heard about this, and I'll explain in a moment for those who haven't, but um, those who, who I've told about this already, and I've kind of given you a prompt, right? I've kind of, I've kind of encouraged you to, to do this with me. Have you begun praying at 9-11 in the morning and 9-11 in, in the evening? Have you been doing that? Because I'll tell you what, if you have, keep doing that. If you have not, I encourage you to start doing that. Um, I'll explain in just a second. But I feel like since I've been doing this, like purposely stopping to pray at like additional times, right? Um, I feel, I feel a difference. Like I feel a bit of a transformation, at least for me. Um, and, and it just, it feels like things aren't as the right word I don't know if toxic is the right word but it doesn't feel so suffocating right like it just everything feels so suffocating in the world right now but since I've been praying earnestly over our nation over our world and the state of things it just it feels like it's not it doesn't feel as heavy you know what I mean? So I, I really encourage, and I want to say this ahead of time because I keep like right at 9-11 when the alarms all go off, I, I explain. And I want to explain ahead of time and make a, bigger, make a bigger point about this because the power of prayer is so incredible. So incredible. Um, and I just really want to stress that. So for those of you that are like, what the heck are you talking about? So last weekend, my pastor... Um, like last week, so now like a week and a half ago, he kind of gave us a, a task that at, okay, so what do you do when there's an emergency? Typically when there's an emergency, you call 911. Well, our nation and our world is in a state of emergency, not necessarily, I mean, in some ways that kind of emergency, but, but not necessarily that kind of emergency, but, but whose help do we need right now? We need God's help right now. And we need divine intervention. So remember in scripture, it says, you know, the prayer of a righteous person has so much power. We actually talked about that. We studied that all last week. And I just want to stress that we need as, as a, the body of Christ, we need to be calling on God to intervene more. We need to be calling on God to help us more as a nation, as a people, as his people, and, and just as a, as a world, right? Like we just, we need his help. We need his intervention. And, um, and we need to be praying earnestly for him to, to work in us. So at 9, 11, every morning we stop whatever we're doing here and we pray. And then in the evenings, if I'm still awake, um, <laughs> we, we stop and pray again. Um, and I just encourage you guys to do that as well. Put it on, put it on your calendar or put it on an alarm, um, whatever, whatever the case is for you. But I encourage you at 9-11, whatever time that is for you, whatever time zone you're in. Um, I know that just passed like a few minutes ago for um, some time zones and it's already passed for some. But, but at 9-11, my time, we will be doing that, um, which is in like a, just under two hours from now. So, I encourage you, call on God, and not just, you know, it's funny, because at first I feel like I didn't really know what to pray for, and I feel like that's kind of, that's kind of probably a common feeling, is like, what the heck do I even pray for? Like, I don't even know what we need. Like, I just know that our world is hurting, and our world is crazy, and everybody's just like ripping each other to pieces, and I don't know what the heck we need. And, and for me, it just started with, I just, I just opened up my heart to God, you know, and just like, God, I don't know what we need, but you do. And I feel like over the course of like a week or so, it's like my eyes have been opened. We, we just, we need to be, we need a change. We need a heart change as his people, as his children, we need a heart change and we need God to step into our hearts 
and, and open ourselves up more to him. And we need him to soften our hearts to him, all of us, as his children. And we need to go out and purposefully do his work and live the way that he calls us to live and stop participating in the toxicity. Stop participating in the hate. Stop participating in the division and do what God calls on us to do and how God calls on us to live. And and so I encourage you, pray for a heart change. And, and that, I'm saying that as somebody who's needed to be humbled myself, right? Like none of us ever want to hear that, but God, whatever whatever you know needs to change in me, I just pray that you change it. Whatever needs to be softened in me, I pray that you soften it. Whatever, whatever ways I need to open my eyes to you, open my ears to you, open my heart to you, I just pray that you work in me in those ways that, that, that you know I need. And, and remember, it starts with God and with us, and then we can, we can go out and make a bigger difference. So, <clears throat> so at 9-11, we're going to do that. I just want to make a point of that. <clears throat> before we got going in here this morning. So, and if you have any questions, let me know. Is our title, what on earth? I just realized, it still says we're doing Minecraft, isn't it? That's bizarre. I don't know. Anyway, random. So, it doesn't say that? It says Yarncraft? Oh, it must be just over on this screen then. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Okay, that's what it should say. It's just over on my... So I have, like, multiple... I'm, like, surrounded by, <laughs> by my stream stuff right now on both monitors. And this one has, like, the moderator version. And it's got the title from yesterday, so it confused me. But anyway, thank you for that. Um, okay, so we are going to jump into Deuteronomy 20, okay? Um, I would love to hear as we go what you guys think, okay? Okay, and I really need to drink this, so I'm going to wait on the yarn. Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, so Son of Light was wondering how the heck you're supposed to say my name. I'll be completely honest, okay? So it is the French translation of Joan of Arc. So technically you would say it in the French, like French dialect or however you want to say that. Um, but for, you know, easiness, people just say Jean. So you can just say Jean. I don't personally care how you pronounce it. Most people, honestly, like people I've, I've enjoyed over the last couple of years, like people just People just, like, pronounce it however however they think. Yeah, a lot of people actually do call me Jay. Super Shadow, if you're familiar with him, he calls me Jay. Uh, there's a couple of other people that call me Jay. That's totally fine. Um, so whatever whatever is easy. Some people call me Gian. Some people call me Jeannie. Some people call me um, Joan. Um, Jean. Gosh, I can't even, I don't think I can even remember all the different ways that people say it. But seriously, like, I don't care how you say it. That's totally fine. But, but for ease, most people just say Jean and that's perfectly fine. So whatever. Yes. Yeah. So it's the French translation of Joan of Arc is what my tag, what my, my name, <laughs> my gamer name is, is, uh, from. So yes. <laughs> But it got the double C's because single C was already taken. <laughs> I have to drink this before it gets warm. Um, okay. So we're going to jump into Deuteronomy. I am in my... Um, right, exactly. Yeah, sometimes you just got to get extra creative, right? Like, I didn't get that creative. I just added a letter, but... <laughs> But yours is fun, and I love that people... You, so you know this... You, you experience the same thing all the time. People are like, how do you say that? <laughs> I'm like, I totally relate. That's exactly the reaction that I get. Every single time I pop into a channel for the first time, or meet somebody for the first time, how the heck do you say that? I love popping into other streamers' channels, and they're like, that you know, I'll say something, and they're like... They, they say it 
however way their brain thinks right off the bat to say it. And then you can see that look of confusion, like, I don't know if that's right. And sometimes they'll say something and sometimes they don't. It's hilarious. I just, I don't even care. I just let it go. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I've, I've noticed that a lot. It's so funny. I love it. Okay, so, um, I am in, I am in the, um, <gasps> excuse me, the cultural backgrounds Bible, study Bible this time. I just kind of felt like maybe there's going to be some helpful notes in here. So, um, so we're going to hop into Deuteronomy 20 and we're going to read through that together and we'll kind of check through some of the notes. I've got some, uh, some notes right off the bat that I'm like, oh, that looks really interesting. So we'll kind of see what we got going on. Okay. So if you are reading along with me, Deuteronomy 20, if not, then here we go. <laughs> when you go to war against your enemies and see horses and chariots and an army greater than yours, do not be afraid of them because the Lord, your God, who brought you up out of Egypt will be with you. When you are about to go into battle, the priests shall come forward and address the army. He shall say, Hear Israel, today you are going into battle against your enemies. Do not be faint-hearted or afraid. Do not panic or be terrified by them. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies, to give you victory. The officers shall say to the army, has anyone built a new house and not yet begun to live in it? Let him go home, or he may die in battle and someone else may begin to live in it. Has anyone planted a vineyard and not be begun to enjoy it? Let him go home, or he may die in battle and someone else enjoy it. Has anyone become pledged to a woman and not married her? Let him go home, or he may die in battle and someone else marry her. Then the officers shall add, is anyone afraid or faint-hearted? Let him go home so that his fellow soldiers will not become disheartened too. When the officers have finished speaking to the army, they shall appoint commanders over it. When you march up to attack a city, make its people an offer of peace. If they accept and open their gates, all the people in it shall be subject to, subject to forced labor and shall work for you. If they refuse to make peace and they engage you in battle, lay siege in that city. When the Lord your God delivers into your hand, put to the sword all the men in it. As for the women and children, the livestock the livestock and everything else in the city, you may take these as plunder for yourselves, and you may use the plunder the Lord your God gives you from your enemies. This is how you are to treat all the cities that are at a distance from you and do not belong to the nations nearby. However, in the cities of the nations the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance, do not leave alive anything that breathes. Completely destroy them. The Hittites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, Jebusites, as the Lord your God has commanded you. Otherwise, they will teach you to follow all the detestable things they do in worshiping their gods, and you will sin against the Lord your God. When you lay siege to a city for a long time, fighting against it to capture it, do not destroy its trees by putting an ox to them, or putting an, <laughs> putting an ox, putting an axe to them, because you can eat their fruit. Do not cut them down. Are the trees, pe are the trees people that you should besiege them? However, you may cut down trees that you know are not fruit trees and use them to build siege works until the city at war with you falls. Okay, so first of all, right off the bat, I know that this is like, whoa, why on earth would God command them to just go and slaughter a bunch of people? I feel like that's a common thing throughout like the Old Testament is people read it and they're like, well, why would a loving God command all of this? right? First of all, you got to remember that this was, this was still very early on in human history, right? And this was still very on, or very early on in, you know, this was before Christ, right? And, and one of <laughs> the reason why Christ came is so that he would be the sin, sin sacrifice. So 
all of the all of the sacrificing all of the all of the the um death and destruction to wipe out sin right it christ fulfilled that right so so new testament and old testament there's very there's differences that need to be understood right and and that's not necessarily our theme for today so we're not necessarily going to de- dive deep into that but i just want to address that because i think that's important especially like talking reading through this particular type of stuff in stream i just encourage you to rather than taking something just at face value to actually strive to understand the context and the history of it that is why i got myself a cultural background study bible okay because it is so important to understand or at least to try to understand right um the the significance of it the the culture of it the background of it the history of it okay the context of it it is very important this is one of those areas but here's what i take away as far as our theme goes this week okay so our theme this week is faithful victory the biggest things that just scream loud and clear to me is one our verse of the day the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give you victory. Okay, so that's that's like the biggest point. The God is with you no matter what you're fighting. No matter what you are fighting, God is with you. And if you are faithful to God, trust me, he's going to be faithful to you. If you go out to fight with him, for him, He's going to be, he's going to fight with you. If you're living life for him in obedience to him, he's going to be with you. He's going to fight for you, right? So you've got God with you. You've got God fighting with you, fighting for you. Um, And then the other thing that really just kind of a theme through it where, okay, we can take a lot of this and it's like, okay, that's not necessarily a hundred percent like, like um, face value relevant, to us, but what is relevant to us is that God instructs us in everything that we do. God paves the way. He lays out the plans. And this is a great example of how God was, he was merciful, right? I love that, you know, he, he sent several categories of people home, right? Like he had mercy on, on several different, you know, types of people, of like, hey, you just built a home and you haven't had a chance to live in it? Like, go home and enjoy it, right? You just got married? Go home and be married. Like, you know, you you just, what was the other one? You just, you know, you just planted your crops and you haven't gotten to, to take care of it or, or enjoy the fruit of that labor? Go home and take care of that. And then the last one, man... Is anyone afraid or faint-hearted? Let him go home. So I feel like the first couple of reasons why he sent people home was was mercy. But at the same time, it, I don't know, man. I would love to hear your input on this, your guys' thoughts on this. So it feels like mercy. It feels like mercy. But at the same time, it's almost like, what are you going to prioritize? Are you going to prioritize stuff on earth? Or are you going to prioritize God? So it's almost like, and, and, I, and I also acknowledge that he says, let him go home. He's not commanding them to go home. He's giving them a choice. So I think that it's mercy, but I think that it's also, hey, what are you going to put first? Are you going to come fight for me and my plan and my kingdom and, and glory and honor? Or are you going to go home and enjoy earthly things? Right. So it's let them where. So I think really, truly what it says to me is wherever your heart is. Determines whether you should stay or go, whether you should continue to fight for the Lord, fight with the Lord or or not. Like if you're afraid, if you are afraid or if you are putting earthly possessions or people above God, He's sending you home, right? When it comes to the battle. So for me, that's a mentality thing. That's a reminder that if you want victory, 
if you want if you want victory in your fight with the Lord, if you want victory in your life, God has to come first. God has to come first. But when you put other things or other people or you're afraid, and that comes before God, and that becomes bigger in your heart than God, then you're not going to find the victory. You're going to be the one at home who's not on the, you know, on the battlefield winning. You're not out there fighting with God. You're home eating bonbons or, you know, whatever, right? So in order to have that victory, you need to be faithful to God and you need to put God first. And that's really what I get from this. Really, truly what I get from this. And let's see. So, um, I've got a section here that says major social concerns in the covenant. And I just thought this was interesting, so I thought I'd share. And, uh, so what are the major concerns in the covenant? Like the original covenant, right? Personhood. Everyone's person is to be secure. False accusation. Everyone is to be secure against slander and false as <laughs> accusation. Women. No woman or no woman is to be taken advantage of within her subordinate status in society. Punishment. Punishment for wrongdoing shall not be excessive so that the the culprit to de uh so that the culprit is dehumanized that's a big one every israelite uh dignity every israelite's dignity and right to be god's servant are to be honored and safeguarded inheritance every israelite's inheritance in the promised land is to be secure property everyone's property is to be secure fruit of labor everyone is to receive the fruit of their labors Fruit of the ground. Everyone is to share the fruit of the ground. Rest on Sabbath. Everyone down to the humblest servant of the resident foreigner is to share in the weekly rest of God's Sabbath. Marriage. The marriage relationship is to be kept inviolate. Exploitation. No one, however disabled, impoverished, or powerless, is to be oppressed or exploited. Fair trial. Everyone is to have free access to the courts and is to be afforded a fair trial. Social order. Every person's God-given place in the social order is to be honored. Ooh. Law. No one shall be above the law, not even the king. Animals. Concern for the welfare of other creatures is to be extended to the animal world. Let's see. I was looking through the reference verses to see if any of them specifically relate to our chapter here. Nope, funny enough, they do not. Interesting. Interesting. So, I, man, so I, I really think, like, the, the, the biggest takeaway for me is in order to have a victory in any area of our lives, we need to put God first. We need to put God first. And we need to not be afraid to put God first. And we need to not be afraid of the circumstances that we face. And when we, when we are unafraid, when we are courageous, when we trust God, when we are faithful and obedient to God, then he, he remember, he's fighting with us and, and he will bring us the victory, right? We will have victory when we remain obedient to God. It reminds me of, um, where was it? in this one we went through 
gosh, what was the chapter? Man, I totally had it in my brain and then I lost it. In in church on Sunday, we actually went through one of the chapters. What, was, what did we go through on Friday? Because I think it was the same thing that we went through on Friday. Yes, it was. Okay. So on Friday, this is, it just reminded me of what we went through on Friday. And it gave me a different perspective. If I can find it. I've got all these sticky notes all over hiding stuff. So on Friday, we were in... We were in Joshua. So confused. There we go. Oh my gosh, I passed it like six times. Sorry. So we were in Joshua chapter one. And I it gave me a different perspective. And our verse of the day today is very similar to um, what we talked about. And I, I love, so Joshua chapter one is, is, is so good. And oh my gosh, sorry. Fans are blowing pages around. Um, I love that if you read through Joshua chapter one, you see that God commanded Joshua and the people to not be afraid and to, to be strong and courageous three times within four verses. And every time he gave a reason, he gave a reason every single time. And the note that I wrote says he told Joshua three times to be strong and courageous and three reasons why all reasons were because of God's promises. And I thought that was a great reminder that when we are afraid of whatever circumstances we are in, whatever battle we are facing, and let's be honest, like it feels like we're facing a lot right now. Um, there's a lot of battles happening in our world right now <laughs> and a lot in our nation right now. And the biggest reason in, in Joshua chapter one, at least that, um, that God gave for remaining strong and courageous is because of God's promises. And, and if you are unfamiliar with the promises that God makes us, then that is all the more reason to spend more time in scripture. There's so many promises that he makes us. And one of those promises is that he will not leave us nor forsake us. He's not going to leave us to just, to just fight the battle by herself, right? When we're faithful to him, when we're obedient to him, we are walking on his path and he's already paved it out. He's already laid out the, 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 the path for us. He's paved the way and he has already won the victory for us. We're just, we're just working on getting there, right? We're just getting to the victory. We're just, we're just still catching up to the solutions that he's already laid out for us, right? But if we go off and we're, if we're afraid, just like in Deuteronomy 20 where he's saying, if you are, if you're worried, if you're scared, go home, right? Like the victory isn't, you know, the victory is not for you if you're going to be scared because then you're going to make everybody else worried and nobody's going to win. Nobody's going to win the, the victory if, you know, all, you know, you people are, are not going to be faithful. You're not going to, you're not going to, to stand firm if one of you lets your fear affect everybody else. Fear is contagious and fear is also not from God. And when we are afraid, it does not just affect us. It also affects others. And, and we end up missing opportunities. Just like here where he said, you know, um, Where'd it go? Is anyone afraid or faint hearted? Let him go home so that his fellow soldiers will not become disheartened too. It's like, well, you're going to miss out on this, 
on this victory, on this, on this um, battle, you're going to miss out here because you're afraid. Or you're going to miss out on this blessing because you're putting other things or other people before, your, before God. Something else is coming before God in your life, in your heart. And so you're going to miss out on an opportunity. You're going to miss out on a victory you could have, a lesson you could learn, and a, and a time where you could grow, you're, you're missing out because you're scared, because you're worried, because you're stressed out, because you have a, a severe anxiety that you're letting overtake you. You're going to miss an opportunity because you're focusing on that more than you're focusing on God. But those who keep their eyes focused on God remain firm, remain strong and courageous, and trust God to get them through, you will have victory in that situation. You will get through that situation stronger. You will get through that situation better. And you will have the victory on the other side because you remain firm. You remain faithful. And you didn't let your fear get in the way. You didn't let, you know, what you, what you want in the world get in the way of what God is calling you to do. You have a choice. And that's what, that's what in Deuteronomy 20, that's what it's flat out saying to me is God's going to give you a choice. Oh, well, you can put, you can put your, uh, your house, your stuff, your, you know, you can go, go work for, um, work to, to gain, you know, food and provisions for yourself. But if you're putting that before God, if you're, if you're trusting yourself more than you're trusting God, if you're putting other people before God then you're going to miss out. You're going to miss an opportunity. Because you're not aligned with God. You're not being faithful to God if you're putting something else before him or someone else before him. Nobody and no thing should come before God. And you should not, your, your fear should never become bigger than you feel God is. Remember that God is bigger. God is always bigger. Bigger than every fear, bigger than every battle, bigger than every struggle. And if you are faithful to him and you remain firm in him and you seek him and seek to do his will and be obedient to him, he's going to bring you to victory. He's going to bring you through that. You're going you're gonna to thrive and grow. Yes, you will still struggle sometimes, but you're still, you're, you're not going to miss the opportunity to grow and to become stronger, to learn and to share the goodness and truth and love of God with others, right? So, a verse of the day again says, For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give you victory. You're not going alone. You're not fighting alone. You have God with you. And he is fighting with you for your victory. He gives you opportunities every day to do his work. Don't be afraid to do what he calls you to do. Don't be afraid to be obedient to him. Don't be afraid to stand up for what you believe. Don't be afraid to do what he's calling you to do in the chaos of our world right now. And don't be afraid of the chaos of the world right now. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid of it. Because God is with you. And he's fighting with you. And you will get through this. You can get through this. You gotta lean on God. You gotta trust God. And you just gotta be faithful to him. And remember that he is always faithful to you. And he's there with you, no matter what. So, I would love to see what you guys think. I would love to hear any encouraging verses that, um, that relate. If you have any, have any verses that, um, that this makes you think of. I know in, uh, Joshua, chapter 1, verse 
chapter one. Like I said, we went through that on Friday. And, uh, and then it was so funny. So on Friday, we went through it together in our study. And then Sunday, it was the passage that my pastor focused on in the sermon. And I was like, whoa, that's, that's crazy. That's wild, right? So, but I love that because it really added some perspective and was on point for our discussion um, this week. And some of the notes that I, that I wrote down, transitions will typically test your faith. Transitions will typically test your faith. So if you're in a period of transition right now, which let's face it, we all are, right? We're all in a period of transition right now with this pandemic. We're all in a period of transition. While, whether we want to be, whether we're acknowledging that we are or not, right? We're all in a period of transition right now. And I, I just, I love this. Transitions will typically test your faith. When we go through a tough time, it can break you or it can make you stronger. And when we focus on the fear, when we focus on the stress, when we focus on the chaos, that will break us. But, again, you remain firm in God. Remain firm with God. And he will bring you the victory. Remain firm with God through your painful transitions and you will grow, you will learn, and your faith will be made stronger. So don't let transitions push you away from God. Let them pull you closer to him and just trust him even more every single step of the way. God doesn't encourage, but commands us to be strong and courageous and to not be afraid. So he commands us throughout scripture. We are commanded to not be afraid because fear is not from God. And there's so much fear in our world right now and in our nation right now. Like I, oh my gosh, our nation is hurting. Our nation is fearful. It is frightening, but Fear is not from God. And God tells us, be strong, be courageous. Do not be afraid. Because he is with you. And I love it. Be strong and courageous because of God's promises. My obedience will bring blessings and success. When you obey God, you will be blessed. And you will have success as far as God determines success for you, right? You will be blessed and you will find success when you are obedient to God. Obedience is tied to blessings. I thought that was an interesting perspective and I feel like we so often don't think like that. But when we're obedient to God, we're, we're, we're in tune with him. We're aligned with him. We can hear <laughs> Excuse me, we can hear him better and we are seeking after him. And when we have our heart all in it and we're seeking after him, we're living the way that he calls on us to live. That in itself is a huge blessing. Yes, the hiccups are crazy today. I don't know what's going on. So obedience is tied to blessings. That's an interesting way to think. But I agree with that because... Again, when you live in obedience, when you live the way that he calls you to live, that in itself is a huge blessing. Everything that you receive through living the way he calls on us to live is a blessing. And then you get to be, you get to open the door for even more blessings as you stay in tune and grow closer to God. God promises to bless us when we are obedient to him. That's another reason we see promises throughout, um, Throughout scripture, but that's actually a promise here. Let's see. So, be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give him. So, I promised this. So if you are strong and courageous, 
you're going to fulfill the promise, right? Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. If you do what you're called to do, you will prosper flat out, right? Be courageous and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And that was all within Joshua chapter 1, verse 6, 7, and 9. And then, be strong. God is with you every step of the way. So, I love that though, the, the kind of recap. Be strong and courageous because of God's promises. And if you are not familiar with God's promises, again, that is all the more reason to spend more time in his words and get familiar. Pray over his promises. Start to absorb them and seek them and find them and, and learn more about his promises within your personal relationship with Christ, wherever you're at with that. Whether you don't believe, whether you have no faith whatsoever, or you have what you think is like the strongest faith you could ever possibly have, you still have room to grow, right? And even if you have no faith, maybe you have no desire, I just encourage you, wouldn't you want to know for sure that what you believe is the truth? I believe this is the truth, and I believe it because of what God has done through me, through my life, in me, in my life and what I've seen in others, but everybody needs to discover that for themselves. And I think that I truly, truly believe that everybody, even and especially um, if you don't have a relationship with God and even if you have no desire, I encourage that you seek out what are God's promises? Like truly, what are the promises that God makes throughout scripture? And seek to find the truth in that so that you can make an educated decision. Whether to turn to God or continue down the path that you're going, right? Like, that's not, that's not me saying, oh, you're terrible. That's, that's literally, I just want you to find the truth for yourself. I, I'm going to tell you what I know to be the truth. I'm going to tell you, um, you know, I'm, we're going to talk about scripture here and, and go through it together. But, but it's so important that each of us individually spends time striving to learn the truth for ourselves because hearing it from somebody else is not the same as you seeking it specifically for yourself. It's not the same thing. I had to go and go through scripture when I first came to Christ um, and started like before I even started like going to church again and, and all of that, like I got a Bible and I was like, I don't understand it. I don't really know, like, I haven't really spent any time in the Bible in my life, but I'm going to get a Bible, and I'm going to try to understand. And from there, hopefully I will, I will know, like, what to do. I'll know if this is baloney, or if this is, or if this is truth, right? And I sought out, what is the truth? And that was my heart in it, is I, I just, I needed to know, what am I missing, is this what I'm missing? Why would this be what I'm missing? And if it's not, okay, then I'll move on to the, you know, to something else and try to figure it out, right? But, but, you, but you, you'll never know if you don't investigate, if you don't do the research yourself. You can, you know, oh, well, I get the verse of the day and I check on that, or oh, I've read the Bible before. Have you really read it with a heart to know the truth? Have you really read it with the desire to find what the truth really, truly is? Or were you just totally shafted by somebody in the past or something, an experience in the past, and you said, screw that, I'm done. Don't let fear stop you from the incredible blessings that you could have. And let me tell you that it is fear, it is fear when you reject the gospel, when you reject God, 
when you reject the Bible, Jesus, faith, religion, right? When you reject all of that and you say, well, nope, I am not going to believe. And, and especially if you don't investigate. And this is, I'm not trying to be harsh. I'm just trying to be honest, okay? When you reject all of that, let's be really honest. From every person that I've really talked to, it's fear. It could be fear of, well, what if the Bible is true and then I have to change my entire life and I don't want to do that. Or fear of, you know, well, I don't know. And I'm kind of, I don't, I don't know how to find out or I'm afraid to find out the truth. Like I, you know, or I'm afraid because what if it's true and I could never be forgiven and I've just been messing up my whole life. And what if I find out that I'm just, I'm damned, right? Like, you know, and there's all kinds of fears why people do not seek the truth. But let me tell you, the truth is that God loves you. God loves you and God desires a personal relationship with you enough that he sent Jesus himself in the flesh to live among people and to be a sacrifice for our sins so that we could be forgiven and we could have a personal relationship with him. He wants a relationship with us badly enough that he went through all of that in order to make it possible for us to be in relationship with him, to, to have forgiveness. So wherever you're at, wherever you've been, if you seek forgiveness from God with your whole heart, you'll find it. You'll receive it. You're never too far gone. And changing your life for God is not a bad thing. It's not even a scary thing. It feels that way beforehand. I felt that way. I was like, oh my gosh, like I, I don't even, how, do, how am I going to do that? Like, how am I going to live like that? Like people are going to hate me. Um, my whole life is going to turn upside down. People are going to think I'm crazy. Um, man, like, oh, I don't even, that's, that's like terrifying. That's daunting. I don't know how on earth I'm going to do that. I don't know how I'm going to do that, but you know what? I just, I just gave it to God and I gave my fear to God. And I am so grateful that I took that step because my life is so much better and so much more satisfying and fulfilling since I let God change me and since I let God change my life. There's nothing scary about it. Fear is not from God. And, and if you're outside of the rela a relationship with God, if you don't have a relationship with God, um, then that probably sounds dumb, right? Like, well, of course it's not from God because there is no God. No, you know, there is a God. There is God whether you believe it or not, and he loves you, whether you believe it or not, and he will forgive you if you seek him. Because the price has already been paid. So, if you are unfamiliar with all of God's promises, like, truly familiar, and let me just tell you, if you, if you claim to be familiar with, with the gospel, if you claim to be familiar with God's promises, if you claim to be familiar with who God is and you still reject it, you're not familiar. I'm just going to be real honest. You're not familiar. You're not done. You're not done investigating, but everybody has free will and everybody has the right to choose. Everybody has the right to choose. But God has, has, has and will continue to go to great lengths in order for you to come into a personal relationship with him no matter where you've been, no matter where you are, no matter how you feel about him right now, no matter how you felt about him in the past, no matter what you have done, said, felt, you absolutely can find forgiveness with him and you are loved and he wants to be in a relationship with you. A loving, 
relationship with you. He wants to help you through life. He wants to give you a better life. And trust me, it's a better life than whatever, however good you think your life is, it can be so much better. So much better. There's nothing to be afraid of. But it is absolutely fear that prevents people from stepping into that relationship. And it's the kind of fear so often that we don't even recognize as fear. That hesitation. That uncertainty. It's fear that's preventing you from learning the truth. From seeking out the truth. Fear of change. Fear of rejection. From God or from people. And heck, you know what? I've been rejected by pretty much everybody that I was close with in my life when I chose to give my life to Christ uh, they all rejected me almost all of them rejected me even now <laughs> and that's fine because I don't need to worry about that and God has given me a family an actual family but a, but a family in him family in Christ to love me and to love in return. He has given me a better life than I ever thought was possible. I never thought that I could be where I am today. But I am only because I gave my life to Christ. And I choose to live in obedience to him every single day. And it is worth it. It's a struggle, but it is worth it. It is worth it. So... Be strong and courageous because of God's promises. And again, if you are not familiar with God's promises, I implore you to get familiar. And if you're here and you're like, I don't even know what that means. I don't know where to start. I don't know how I feel about that. And if you need a buddy that'll be loving and not just like Bible thump you, right? Like <laughs> nobody wants that. Um, if you... Well, I shouldn't say nobody wants that because a lot of people, a lot of people do, but I don't, I don't do the Bible thumping, you know, I, I, I will always try to approach every person that comes to me with love, with kindness, with patience, with understanding. I will always strive to meet people where they are. And if you need somebody to talk to, even if I'm not the right person, um, if, you know, if you come to me and I am not the right person to help you, I know a great team of people that are incredible and I would absolutely trust and I would absolutely encourage you to talk to so I can connect you with with the right people or I can or I can do my part do my best and that's what our community is for so if you're listening if you're watching and you would like to get connected and you would like to ask questions if you would like to learn more if you even if you don't have a relationship with Christ and maybe you don't think you have a desire to. But maybe you're kind of like, yeah, maybe I should do a little research. Maybe I should ask some questions. Come join us. You'll find loving people who just want to love you. So, good morning, Johnny. Good morning. If anybody does have any questions... If anybody does have any comments, any, anything maybe that they've been afraid of, that they've been worried about, that they want to talk through, let me know. Whether privately or here, it's totally fine. But I just, I love, I, I love this topic today. I love this topic today. I've been a Christian gaming buddies for a long time. Well, hey, you got them. <laughs> you got them. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've seen all your messages, so you're just kind of on a roll. Uh, for those who are just coming in and they see that my camera is black and white, I apologize that it's, like, super weird. Uh, my camera's doing some weird stuff today. So, black and white was the only, like, not absolutely horrible that I could do. <laughs> oh, man. It's a black and white message. Can you see it? It turned out green for me, or, like, teal. But yes, I see it. So yes, you can see. Oh, I see. Okay. Got it. I'm slow. 
<laughs> so, so guys, what are, what are some verses that are really encouraging to you? I want to read, um, I just, I love all of these verses. So in, in first Joshua, be strong and of good courage. And then seven, only be strong and very courageous. And then verse nine, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And then going back to Deuteronomy 20. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you <laughs> against your enemies to give you victory. God is with us. God is with us. And it can feel so hard to remember that sometimes. But I just, man, I just encourage you to just give your worries to God. Whatever you're worried about, whatever you're afraid of, Whatever you're angry about, whatever you're depressed about, whatever you are fighting, whatever you are struggling with, give it to God. And you know what? Whether you are currently in a relationship or an active relationship, any relationship at all with God, if you seek God out, he will hear you. If you are struggling right now and you need peace, bring it to God. Bring it to God. He is there and he is fighting for you and he is fighting with you and he wants you to come to him so that he can help you find peace. He can fill you up with peace and he can help you through life he wants to help us through life he wants to help us do life better and trust me no matter where you're at your life can still get better every day I wake up and I'm like man I really don't know how life could be better but it gets better every day because I have God and every all the blessings that he provides because I am faithful and obedient he is able to bless me and carry me through all the tough stuff. And yes, I stumble sometimes. And yes, I worry and I freak out. But when I give it to God, I find peace again. It's a constant process. It's not a one and done. It is a constant process. Faith is active. Faith is an action. Faith is a lifestyle. You have to constantly be acting in faith. And Son of Light lets me catch up on you. I say that all the time. As long as they don't call me late for dinner, it's all good. I say that all the time. Um, and God is righteous and holy, so whatever he does is not ever evil or bad. It can only ever be good and pure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Also, the Bible says it is for kings to search or miss... It is for kings to search, oh, for mysteries, and we are king... Oh, search out. Okay, I see, I see. So it is for kings to search out mysteries, and we are kings now. Yes, that's accurate as well. When our lives change, it's like ice being melted. Oh, man. Yes, all the junk just melts away. That is so accurate. Absolutely, I can agree with that. I can agree with that. Um, that's a very accurate description of what it felt like when I came to Christ. It's just all the junk. All the shame, all the guilt, all the, all the worry and care about like, you know, because I know I was one of those that just worried about like, well, what if I lose people? People are going to think I'm crazy. People aren't going to like me. I'm, uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to be all by myself. And, and I worried and that held me off for a long time. 
And when I finally stopped worrying about that and I just trusted God, that all just melted away. It wasn't, it wasn't a big deal anymore. It wasn't an issue anymore. I didn't worry about that stuff anymore. And, and it took a lot for it to finally like really melt away. I love that terminology. That's great. Um, and, and now I'm at a point where, you know, I have, I have a terrible relationship with a good chunk of my family and they, and it's because of my faith. And I'm at the point where it doesn't, it doesn't bother me anymore because I'm just, I'm just going to do the best that I can to be obedient to God and glorify him in those relationships, regardless of how they feel about God. I'm going to love him anyway. And I'm going to do my best in those relationships, regardless of how they treat me because of my faith. And that's the best we can do, right? Pray on that. Pray on the relationships, pray on the people, and pray for guidance in what to do in those relationships. Just keep on praying. Keep on praying and just trust God. Give it to God. Give them to God. Lift them up to God. Right? Um, and good morning, Johnny. How are you doing this morning? Going to Christian Gaming Buddies for a while. Four hiccups. I think that there's been a lot more than four hiccups today. <laughs> I've been hiccuping a lot for some reason. Place worry at the feet of Jesus and refuse to pick it up again. I love that. I love that. I'm going to write that down. I'm going to write that down. i got to write that one. Put worry at feet of Jesus. And refuse pick it back up. I love that. I'm great. I'm very sore. Day two of my new workout routine. I am extremely sore, but <laughs> but I am I am doing very well. Doing very well. In fact, I still have not finished my protein coffee, and it's getting warm. Fortunately, it's not dairy, so I'm okay. Um, yeah, dude. So, so I'm interested. What verses or what encouragement even would you guys share with somebody who is struggling? <laughs> oh, you guys are funny. So, um, it's protein coffee. So it's it's a whey protein that's paleo and my allergy friendly um and then it is oat milk which for my like restrictions is like the only kind of milk that i can use and then coffee so oat milk coffee and whey protein all shaken up it's not bad actually it's not bad it does taste like coffee it tastes like coffee with a uh, kick sort of <laughs> um oh my gosh excuse me I'm so sorry big yawn goodness <clears throat> uh let's see yeah yeah welcome 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 say so why christianity because god is the one and only god and christ is the one and only savior. And I wholeheartedly believe scripture and I believe in Christ and what he, and that he was crucified, died and was risen again to defeat death and sin so that we could all be forgiven of our sins and come back into a relationship with God. And when we accept Christ, we receive the Holy Spirit, and we are in relationship with God, and we are transformed. Our old sinful self is dead, and we are renewed in Christ. And I believe it because I live it. And God has shown me that he is real, he is there, he is active in my life and in the, in, in the world. And even, even though there's a lot of 
people that don't believe that that will try to dispute it, I wholeheartedly believe that without any question in my mind. That is why. God is God. Jesus is Jesus. And the Bible is the Bible. The Bible is the living word of God. Do I play chess? That's so random. <laughs> Why are you asking if I play chess? <laughs> Why are you asking if I play chess? That's, that's so random. I don't even know what to say to that. Why not checkers? <laughs> oh, man. You like to play chess? I do actually like chess. Um, I'm really terrible at it. Like, I'm rusty, I should say. I haven't played it in a really long time. But we actually, ironically, we just got a, uh, a, a board, like a set of games. And so we, it comes with, like, checkers and chess and, and uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. But we've been, we've been playing that stuff. It's pretty fun. Let's see. You think the New Testament was created to get the people of that time off of the ritual of human animal sacrifice? That is a loaded question. That is a loaded question. I don't know that I could answer that right now in this format, but if you would like to um, carry out that discussion, you're welcome to hit me up privately. Um, can we play a chess game on stream? Not right at this moment, but maybe sometime. It's funny because I actually have thought about doing that kind of stuff. People, people seem to love like marbles and chess and, and, uh, I don't know, all those like little games and stuff. So, um, I've considered it. I've considered it. We could probably do that sometime today. Actually I'm doing, well, not that I've been doing much of it, um, but we are doing yarn crafts and we are encouraging people to um, do things that they love and bring it to God. And so for me, I love crochet and I am, I am working on a crochet project and that's where I'm at. Um, like Jackbox TV type chess thingy. They have a big, oh, they have a big checkers game out front oh cracker barrel i totally missed that that first thing you said cracker barrel yeah we don't have cracker barrel here but that's cool though they have a big old chest che uh, checkers board check yeah checkers game out front that's cool i had a coffee shop that uh um has checkers in the coffee shop so you can like play when you are waiting for your coffee or drinking your coffee or whatever. So that was pretty cool. Um, but on our topic though, yeah, I've never, I don't even, I've never had Cracker Barrel, so I'm not like, I, I'm not too sad over it because I don't even know what I'm missing. So it's all good. Um, <laughs> so what is encouraging to you guys? What would you guys share in encouragement on, on our topic right now, um, what would you share to be encouraging to others? Especially those who maybe are not of faith. They don't have a relationship with God. What would you share with them that would be encouraging? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not, it's not up in the Pacific Northwest. What's your, so Son of Light and uh, Johnny and anybody else who would like to share a verse or just a bit of encouragement or whatever, um, what, what is encouraging to you guys? Deciding what um, stitch I want for my, I'm making a coaster. I know that sounds super not exciting. Um, I'm making a coaster because, woo, oops. I need my coffee <laughs> to stop burning my mouse pad. Uh, most encouraging thing for me is when I feel God's presence. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. And I think it's, it's really important for us to, you know, I know that people who don't have a relationship with God, you, you hear that and it's like, uh, yeah, right. Okay. And it really, for me, it took actually like, it took believing or it, it, it took, um, it took my first step of faith in order for that to actually, like, be real to me. Like, it didn't feel, it didn't feel real to me until I finally had given my life to God. And, and then I started to feel that and understand it. But, but for me, like, that wasn't a reason to come to God because I didn't understand it at all. So I know when you're kind of, when you're an outsider looking in, that's like, that's really, that sounds crazy. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that you're wrong in your encouragement. I'm just saying, like, I know, man. I just remember, like, where I was at, and I would hear people say that, and I was like, you are nuts. <laughs> like, you are crazy. Um, the story of Moses inspires you. Awesome. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great story. We actually were reading, uh, we read, actually, we read Joshua chapter one, and we actually also read, like, right at the end of Moses's life. Where did we read? I can't remember what chapter we read, but but we actually just read that last week, and and um, absolutely, absolutely. And I love that at the end of Moses's life, God was like, "Hey, uh, you know, you're not gonna you're not gonna go to the end of this." of this mission, you're going to pass this off to Joshua. And, uh, so you're not going to be the one to fulfill this. Like Joshua is, <laughs> and I can only imagine what Moses would have felt like, right? Like, I don't know, would he feel relieved or, or just like snubbed? I don't know. Probably not Moses. Moses probably wouldn't have felt snubbed. Moses is Moses, right? Like, Man, but, like, think of how we would feel, like, if that if that happened to us, and which it does, right? Like, you're not the one that's going to do this. I feel like that's so important when we're, when we're thinking about, like, our calling in life. We each have a personal calling, and God will call us to our personal calling, and, and will, will call us to do things throughout our life, throughout our days, that, um, that we need to be obedient in. And when we do, man, we are blessed. But when we go off trying to do somebody else's calling, that is not in our plan, right? Not in the plan for God that God has for us. We can really mess things up and we can make it, you know, where we are, we are um, taking somebody else's opportunity, right? But we need to stick to our calling not try to do everything. That's one thing we talked a lot about last week too that I think is just so important for us to remember. We're not called to do it all, right? We're not called to do it all. We're called to be obedient where God calls us to be, where God calls us to go, how God calls us to live. And there's, you know, there's certain things that God will call us all to live like, right? But but there's certain things that God is going to speak to us individually to do as well. How he tells us to do it, when he tells us to do it, and what he tells us to do. Man. Um, that will draw you into a time of learning and revelation. Yes, son of light, I agree with that. Hold on, I'm like missing the stitch okay um how do you know when god has a plan or calling for you i think the closer that you get to god the deeper you get in your relationship with god the easier it is to hear from him and the easier it is to discern what is what is from god what what are you hearing from god and what are you maybe hearing from the world around you or your own selfish desires and um last week we actually talked about um prayer prayer is the the, we have to be praying passionately with our whole heart. We need to pray like crazy and just keep on praying um, for God to work in us, to speak to us, and to, to open our eyes and open our heart. And the closer we get to God, 
the easier it is to hear him and to discern the difference between his voice and other voices. And we get closer to God through passionate prayer, intentional prayer, and also through studying his word, spending time in his word. Exactly. The closer you get to someone's mouth, the easier it is to hear them speak, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's a good way to put it, Son of Light. And Keturah says, I agree, time, his word, and prayer, absolutely. And I think patience is a huge factor. Um, we need to have patience with, with God as he is patient with us. And we need to remember that he is in control. Even when we feel like he's not, or even when we feel like there's just too much going on, like, you know, I don't hear God, so I'm just going to go figure out my own way. No, 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 no. Be patient. Because when you have that heart, you're not really having a heart to hear God. You're having a heart to just do whatever you want to do. And that's how you're going to mess up. You know what I mean? So, you know, if you intentionally, passionately pray, pray and, and seek to hear him and grow closer to him and have a heart for him, you will. And you will, over time, you will you will start to have an easier time hearing and understanding what he's calling you to do. Hold on. Right at the end here. I'm doing a double... Doing a double... What is happening? Hello, kitten! <laughs> the cat is playing with a crumpled up paper ball on the floor and she... <laughs> I look at her and she just looks at me like <laughs> I've been spotted <laughs> goofy cat um, how do you confirm that the voice of God is speaking to you and it is not your internal voice creating ideas or is it more like meditation honestly for me I feel like again as I've gotten closer to God it gets easier to, to tell the difference but there's definitely times where um, it's, it's really hard to feel like man, is this me? Is this my want? Or is this really what God's calling me to do? And trust me, there's been plenty of times where that has been, um, that has been a factor in, in, you know, in my decision making, you know, just trying to figure out like, what, what does God want me to do here versus what do I want to do here? And, um, honestly, if you don't hear an answer, like loud and clear, you're not done praying. And that is the, the, the best way that I've ever been able to make it through uh, those tough decisions is when I was not sure. I was honest with God about it. God, I'm not sure if this is you or if this is me or if this is the world. Like, I don't know for sure what, you know, what I need to do here. I don't know if it's you that's telling me to go this way. And I, I, need, I need some more guidance here. And so I just lean even closer into God and I'm honest with God about it and he will make it clear. Right. But, but again, what are you doing cat? She's being really weird. Um, I'm sorry. The stinking cat just cat go away. Go. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was weird. I don't know what the heck she's doing. Um, but again, the, the closer you get to God, the easier it is to hear him clearly. And the easier it is to discern the difference between his voice and your own or the world's. Um, and it will take some, some mess ups. It will take, you know, sometimes you're, you're gonna mess up and, we have to remember to have patience with ourselves as we learn and we grow. But if we have a heart for him, our heart is for him and our heart is to be obedient to him. And that's how we are approaching things. Um, that's, that's extremely important. Uh, no, not necessarily like that, but, um, it's, it's different for everybody, to be completely honest. Um, I think everybody experiences it in their own personal way, whatever way God knows 
will speak to them, right? And sometimes it'll be different based on the circumstances, right? Sometimes things will just align the way that God God needs them to for you to see what to do, right? Um, and sometimes you, you will feel that nag, you will feel that pull, you will feel that voice um, in, in a variety of other ways. Like there's all kinds of ways that people that people have explained that they, that they feel that. And, um, I, you know, I've always tried to put it into words for me. And, and I think that it's just one of those things that I, I don't know how else to put it, except for like, when you know, you know, and, and God's going to speak to you personally in your personal like language, right? You're not language as in like, we're speaking English, but like, you know, the way that's going to speak to you and you're going to hear him clearly. Right. And it's going to be different for, for each person. Uh, Son of Life says, also Jesus tells us he is the shepherd. We are the sheep that his sheep hear his voice. Absolutely. Exactly. Exactly. And when you, when you seek to follow Christ and, and live a Christ-like life, um, you, you, will, you will get familiar with his voice. You will get familiar with his voice. Uh, meaning you will know in your heart when it's the Lord. Exactly. That's a great, great 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 thing to bring up thank you for that son of light um i had that problem too i always thought god would speak to me in a special voice but it was mostly always it has mostly always been my voice as him yeah it's it's interesting it's interesting to hear um what speaks to each person but, but honestly like you'll find that there's no like one particular way there's no like one answer right? It's, and, and honestly, nobody else's answer is probably going to make sense to another person entirely because that's the way God knows to speak to them. But God's going to know to speak to you in a different way that speaks to you, right? So as you get closer to God and you grow in that relationship, you will learn to hear him more clearly. And also, also, a key part of that is as you learn more about Christ, you learn how to live better. And when you learn how to live better, you learn how to make better choices according to his ways and his will and his plan. And when you're seeking to live your life as Christ would, as Christ led his life, you're seeking to live your life as Christ calls us to do, um, then it really starts to become easier to hear God because then you're going to hear the difference between, oh, this is how Christ would walk. This is what, what Christ would do. This is what Christ instructs us to do and how he calls us to live as followers of him, right? And so, so then as we learn more, that starts to make more sense and we have that in our mind we we can tell the difference between okay that's totally not the right way to go because that's totally not where you know where Christ would go right but it takes it takes really throwing yourself into that relationship and striving to learn more every day about Jesus about God and and really striving to to be an active participant in that relationship. And, and as you, just like with any relationship, you learn how to communicate over time. It's not like when you first meet somebody, it's like kind of that awkward, like, I don't know how to talk to you yet. Like, I don't know your body language. I don't know, you know, I don't know your tones yet. I don't, you know, I don't know how you speak. It's kind of the same thing. You will learn how to communicate with God as you develop that relationship, as you grow and nurture that relationship. Keturah says, yeah, I hear his voice as mine too. I think it's alignment, like, like I said, when we spend time getting to know him, our plans begin to align and you just kind of know. At least that's how it is for me. Yep, that makes, that makes good sense. Thank you for that, Keturah. Um... Finding God is really finding yourself? No, definitely not. Definitely not. I think you find yourself when you find God and when you learn more about God and you find you find yourself as in you find how to how you're supposed to live and how you're supposed to to um, do life better. But no, finding God is not finding yourself. <laughs> Let's see. Oh. 
Why is my scroll not working? That was weird. Uh, that's funny. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> that's so funny. You guys are hitting the, the bot for hostility. That's so funny. Um, you can say this. Tr truth, I want to really know you. Reveal yourself to me. Exactly. Seek to know the truth. And when you just keep on praying, and like I said, if you don't feel an answer yet, if you don't feel like you have a certain answer, then you're not done praying. Just keep on praying and keep on seeking out God and his will for you and keep seeking to do his will and, and to live in his ways. And again, prayer and spending time in his word. Prayer and spending time in his word. Those are the, the primary ways to um, get to know Christ better, grow closer to God, and start to really see, hear, and feel him um, better in your life. Ooh, uh-oh. So I have a love-hate relationship with this yarn because it keeps nodding itself randomly. Whoops. Um, okay, so Johnny says, also, it can be really easy for your own mind and even the devil, that might sound crazy as an unbeliever, to make it hard to hear God's voice. It's not always an auditory voice, even though for some people it can be, but the voice of God mainly comes from his word, which is the Bible. His voice will never contradict his word, if that makes sense. Absolutely. And again, that's why I stress more time in prayer, more time in his word. More time in prayer, more time in his word, and, and you will start to learn, you know, his ways, his promises, his commands, and the way that he calls on us to live, the things that he calls on us to do throughout our life. And through that, you will start to really hear him better and understand your calling better. Uh, Son of Light says, Mostly we come with the presence of the Lord to people who do not know him, and he says he will put the words in our mouth for people to understand about him when we don't know what to say, when he wants, us, when he wants to touch someone's life through us. From your experience, what has God told other people? What do you, I'm not sure what you mean specifically by that. man this cat she just snuck back over to her little crumpled up ball and she's all sniffing at it she's gonna like bite it and pick it up and then she, i'm looking at her and she just looks up <laughs> like oh no and then she runs away <laughs> this cat man oh my gosh um always he says i love you and have a wonderful plan for you firstly he always shows compassion no cat cam no no cat cam Plus, this cat doesn't really like me very much, so she would not be thrilled with me trying to pick her up and show you. Um, so maybe I'll just, like, I'll take a picture of her and post it in Discord later for you. She's a pretty cat. She's gorgeous. She's definitely my child's cat, though. Not mine. Um, it, would be a, it would be a colored cat. Yeah, actually, it would. She is, um, she is gray and white, so, um, black and white or normal, she would look about the same. <laughs> I can tell you for sure there's a lot of stuff that people said God told them when he didn't. Yeah, that's, that's valid. That's valid. Just because somebody claims that God told them doesn't mean that it's true all the time. And, and that's the same for ourselves, too. We can claim, oh, God told me to do this, but really we could be chasing after our own selfishness or Satan could be totally whispering in our ears. You know what I mean? And that's, again, why a personal relationship with Christ is so important um, for our faith development and our in being able to discern the difference. Let's see. I'm almost in my second row. I'm doing a double stitch for my little coaster project. I'm pretty excited.
This is turning out much better than last week's did. Okay, let's see. Um, Satan comes as an angel of light to trick and deceive. So if you aren't keen to the Lord's voice, you will believe the deception or a lie that is a good counterfeit to the authentic. Absolutely. Again, I stress, really, the, the best answer that we can possibly give you is to grow closer to God through prayer and spending time in his word and, and fellowship. I should add that in as well. And fellowship. Oops, I totally messed that up. Um, so you say that the closer you get to God, the more you will hear, since you have a method of communicating with God that multiple people are using, surely God has spoken to other people, to other people than yourself, other than the people in the Bible. What have other people told you that God said to them? Also, if someone believes that God told them something, how can you confirm that it was not God? Well, first of all, it's not up to me to determine what somebody else's relationship with God is like. That's up to them and God. That's none of my business, right? Like, what's up to, what's, what's my business is my personal relationship with God. You know what I mean? So, you know, I, I see, I, I think I see where you're, where you're going with that. And, you know, people tell me things all the time. We have an entire Christian community and we talk about, we talk about the Bible. We talk about God all the time, right? So, I mean, I hear things all the time. And if you talk, if you fellowship, that's why, and that's why I include fellowship in that. I should have earlier, but I, I, I didn't, I didn't say that, but honestly, fellowship is a huge part of, of learning about God and, and, you know, working together. We're called to do life together and fellowship together and pray together and learn and grow together. And we need to be doing that as well. And, you know, when, again, like God will, God will speak to you what you need to know, what you need to hear, what you need to understand, um, what you need to, to learn, if I haven't said that already. Um, you know, he's going to speak to you, and, and people will tell you their experiences, but, but it's, it's between you and God how you receive that and how you react and respond to it, you know. But that's, you know, there's plenty of things that people tell me, and I'm like, if you feel that's what God told you to do, that's between you and God. Like, that's none of my business. You know, but if you want to share it and you want to talk about it, like, let's talk about it. Like, that's cool. But, you know, it's, it's not my business. It's not my place to, to say whether, you know, oh, that's totally God or not. What we are called to do is hold each other accountable. If somebody is living in a way that is not according to, um, to the commands, to how God calls on us as followers of Christ to live, and they say, oh, well, God told me to do this thing that goes completely against scripture, right? Goes completely against God's laws. Then, okay, I'm sorry, but that wasn't God that told you to do that. Like, I don't, you know, and, and we're called to hold each other accountable in that. But one thing that I stressed a couple of weeks ago is that we each, and, and we talked about it a little bit earlier, is that we each have our own calling, our own unique calling. Like we're all called to like the same mission, right? The same overall mission and like the same way of life. But then there's going to be specific things within our life, within our calling that God will, will specifically call each of us as individuals to. Um, and that is between them and God. It is not up to us to look at somebody else and say, your calling is wrong. You're not living out your calling, right? It's not up to us. That's between them and God. If they're not living the way that God calls them to live, it calls us all to live. That's one thing. But, but just saying, you know, oh, well, you know, I don't agree with that. That's not how I was called to live. So that's not how you should live. That's not, that's, that's, no, that's not, that's not how we should, how we should fellowship, how we should hold each other accountable and, and, and talk to each other. But, you know, if somebody wants to talk about, their calling or you know what what god speaks to them and things like that like by all means but it's not up to me to say whether whether god spoke to them or not we're just simply saying that it happens 
that people will very often be deceived or just be deceiving and say, well, God told me to do this and, and God didn't. And that's just a fact. That's just a fact of life. We're all, we're all victim of that. You know, that's just a fact of life. That's a fact of being human. But those cases happen less and less frequently for ourselves as we grow closer to God, as we learn more about God. Um, let's see. And Johnny says, you confirm it by testing if it aligns with scripture. Yep, exactly. That's, and that's basically part of what I was saying. You know, if it aligns with scripture, then, you know, then you're good. But um, if it doesn't, then you probably need to reevaluate what you're believing. God is good and won't tell someone to do evil harm, evil harmful things for one. Yeah. Fellowship is iron sharpening iron. Yep. Yep. Holding each other accountable. Actually, fellowship is supposed to be like a family. Yes. Well, that as well. <laughs> I am partially called to inspire and encourage others. Yep, and you're going to have your own unique way that that you're called to do that. Johnny, uh, or yeah, yeah, says, Johnny, so the determining factor is how much what you are told matches the Bible. That makes sense. Do you think God might tell you something that does not match with the Bible due to the passage of time? Okay, first I'm going to stop before I even read the rest of it. The Bible is always relevant. The, the, the fact the key factor in what you're saying what you're asking is that you have to you have to learn about context you have to learn about context you have to learn about the relevance about the history about the culture and be able to you know pray over it and study it and learn how is this relevant because there's certain things that we, we actually talked about earlier when we read Deuteronomy chapter 20 and I flat out said don't take this at face value and feel like oh my gosh this is horrible and this is irrelevant and this has this has no relevance to me or our time right now no there's plenty of relevance you just have to look at it in the right context you have to take you have to you have to consider that when you don't consider context you're missing a huge huge factor of scripture um and then also so the determining factor is how much what you were told matches the bible um if if what you are told does not match the bible at all then it's not from god if there's even an inkling of it not matching from matching scripture, it's not from God. If it does not align with God's word, God's written word, then it's not from God. Right? Because he will never tell you to do something that goes against scripture. Just flat out. It's not going to happen. So if it doesn't adhere to scripture then uh, it's not from God, you know? On row three, it's turning out okay. I don't, I don't know that this is like the best yarn to be doing this with because the colors are so far apart. So that's okay. Um, exactly, yeah, context is very important. Context is very important. It's because, yes, because why? Scripture is words whispered to men from the Holy Spirit. So for God to go against Scripture, he would go against himself. Exactly. 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 Well, selfies are not in the Bible, but moral, moralistic laws in the Bible are timeless. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Context. Context. <laughs> That's funny. Context and, and, I mean, there's, man, there's just so much, so much that, that we need to strive to understand. And it's not like we're just going to understand it all overnight, right? Like, it doesn't happen that way. That's why God tells us that, throughout our life and throughout our relationship with him to spend active time in his words, seeking to understand, seeking to learn, seeking to grow, seeking him, right? And so as we spend time in his word, 
we're we're able to we're better able to learn and grow and and understand more and more and so every time you read a different passage it might have a different thing to say to you right like there's plenty of times i've read certain scriptures and it'll say one thing one time and and another time god will tell me something different through it and the context matters and and your circumstances will will help you in that as well your experiences will help you um as well oh my goodness hold on <laughs> i'm like struggling with a stitch here so um we are going to um so just fyi we are going to stop and pray in just a few minutes we've got um at 9 11 we will we will stop and pray over our nation and our world and um and so i would love to do that and then after that we are going to look and see who to raid so we will pray and then we will finish up here <clears throat> in just a few minutes so like 10 15 minutes left of our time together this morning um and again i just want to encourage you guys that if you have a hobby if you have something that you love to spend time doing um god has blessed you with a gift talent um creative outlet whatever it is he's blessed you there so that you can use that to glorify him um and i want to just encourage you to bring those hobbies bring those creative talents um, into your time with God and bring them to God and glorify God with those things. And so that's why I'm doing my yarn crafts today. Um, it'll be Bible journaling on Thursday. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna check in with our journals. Anybody who has decided to do the journaling with me, or if you're wondering what I'm talking about, um, there's a downloadable section on the website. Um, you can you can check out, um, and you can hit me up and we can talk about that um, as well. In the server or privately whatever um, but thursday we'll go into that and we'll do some like probably coloring and stuff as foo-foo as that sounds again whatever whatever hobby you want to do is is great you definitely don't need to do um do my hobbies if you want to cool totally totally down for that but don't feel like you have to but we're going to do more bible study and then tomorrow tomorrow we will do our voice chat bible study and we are going to do it in discord so if you would like to join our voice chat bible study tomorrow um you can join the discord and and hang out with us there and um and we'll go through that tomorrow morning 9 a.m pacific time is our bible study in the discord okay um let's see let me catch up here <laughs> let's see Son of Light says, you're not here by accident, meaning there is a hunger for the Lord in you, even if you don't believe. Oh, thank you for that. Thank you so much for that. Welcome to the fam. And for real, thanks for, thanks for all your questions. Like, you're totally good. And you came in at a good point. We were at a great transition point to answer some questions and, and things like that. And I'll always be honest when, like, it's a... When it's not the right setting to answer a particular question or I'm not the best person to answer that, I'm always going to be honest with you. Just like there's a couple of questions I'm like, ah, I don't know that this is the right setting for that. Or I may not be the right person. Let's hit up on that more privately or you join the server and you can ask others in the community as well. Um, but OK, so let's see. But yes, absolutely. Like Son of Light said, you are not here by accident. You are not here by accident. Um, there is a hunger for the Lord in you, even if you don't believe. Holy Spirit draws all humanity unto the Lord. Jesus, uh, so you were drawn here by the Spirit of God. What? No game playing. No, not today. Remember, we changed up our, our, our dealio, but I will be in ESO here in a little bit, but uh, it'll be just a little bit later. Um, and then Johnny says, I think people have a lot of questions and people would be really surprised that if they took some time to search scripture, their questions would be answered. I understand that it takes time and effort, but you'd be very surprised about how much is wrong about what the world thinks about God. Amen. Amen. I tell you, oh my gosh, 100% amen agree. Um, yeah, yeah, I gotta go, but you guys have been pretty cool. Is this the normal time frame of this stream? I have a thirst for knowledge. 
Sun of Light that includes a better understanding of religions. I am always curious of the why and the context and so forth. You guys seem willing to explain, which is more than I can say for some of the other Christians I have met. So bravo. <laughs> I'm glad you feel that way. Um, absolutely. Uh, and, and if you ever feel like you're being attacked, like that is never the intention here. And I don't tolerate that kind of behavior here. And honestly, like it's very rare. And usually it's only like if a troll comes in. So whatever, but but no, you are loved. You are welcome here. And, you know, um, sometimes we will, we, it won't necessarily be the appropriate time for, for off topic, shall we say, questions. Um, but I will always do my best to answer your questions. And so will others. So even if I don't approach it, somebody else in the chat is welcome to tackle the questions. And feel free also to join the community if you would like. Um, yeah, yeah, if you're still here. I hope I caught you while you're still here you are welcome to join us in the discord um, and have conversations with us there. We also have GMA that is a community of all different walks of life. That is a huge community, massive, but amazing. And they have a section dedicated to tough questions and a lot of people that are very like well educated <laughs> and a lot better equipped than I am in most cases to answer a lot of these tough questions and, and very important questions. So, um, you can do the commands um, exclamation GMA or exclamation discord, either one or both. And you can join GMA and you can join us in our server um, for additional places to hang out and ask questions. But yes, as far as the stream, our stream starts at 7 a.m. Pacific time. Sometimes we go really late. Sometimes we don't. Um, today we are going to, to cut down at about well here after we pray we're gonna we're gonna wait until we have our prayer and close that out with prayer and then we're gonna um gonna head out for the day um and uh yeah so 7 a.m start time though for sure every monday tuesday thursday friday and then wednesday we do a voice channel study that is more private and more focused every wednesday at 9 a.m pacific time okay so that'll be tomorrow um and thank you so much for following. I really appreciate that. I'm glad you're here. You definitely are not here by accident. And I appreciate your questions and um, your willingness to have a good conversation. Um, I, I always appreciate when I know that these are challenging conversations and uncomfortable for a lot of people. And I appreciate all of you, all of us, for being able to participate in these conversations without any kind of bad juju you know what I mean like there's it's so easy to get caught up in in ill feelings and ill you know ill demeanor I don't ever want to find that here and I appreciate that you guys are so good about always welcoming people in with their questions um and thank you for for responding and asking your questions in um such a such a respectful manner as well I love that and I just I just want to acknowledge that so thanks so much for all of you Hap says, um, I've been lurking, but welcome to the family. Always willing to have an open conversation anytime. Glad you stopped in. Absolutely. And again, I will stress, you're welcome to continue this conversation in the Discord. Um, oh, even off stream gameplay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll play games later, but I'm not going to do it on stream today. Um, I don't game on stream every day. And I've got some other things I need to do today, so it's kind of probably going to be scattered. But I'll totally be an ESO later for sure. Um... Johnny says, man, God's word calls Christians to be loving and patient. And I found that there are so many Christians who don't respect Christ as the Bible calls us to. It was awesome having you here. Yeah. there. It, and that's one reason I stress. We all need a change of heart. We all need a change of heart. We need to pray over our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ that we all have a heart change and have our hearts realigned with God and his plan for us and his call for us and how we're called to love each other and treat each other and share his truth and love and light with, with the world, right? We all need a heart change and we all need to be cleaned up so that we can be realigned with him. So absolutely, you know, and that's part of holding each other accountable, you know? Um, it's also funny, the Bible says that there are Christians who like to argue and bicker and to avoid them. Yes! Oh my goodness. Ugh. Yep. I try to remember that. I try to make sure that I don't hop on that bandwagon on accident. 
I just try to avoid conflict, basically. Like, that's, that's where I'm at. Like, I don't like conflict of any kind, so I just try to avoid it. And if I see it or if it starts to happen, I'm like, I'm out. Like, I've said my piece. Like, I'm, I'm out. I'm not going to argue. You know, when it turns into arguing and bickering, that's a problem. That's a problem. A loving conversation is wonderful. I love that. Um, yes. Okay. So, uh, we are going to pray in just a moment. If you guys have a prayer request you would like to, uh, include, please let me know. Yeah. Don't be getting a bicker sticker. <laughs> I love that. A bicker sticker, man. We should get a, we should do a discord emote. Oh, there's the alarms. There's the alarms. Okay, let me finish this stitch. Okay. All right, guys. I'm going to turn off the alarms and we're going to pray, okay? Hold on. Let me... Ah! Sorry. Yelling. Hold on. Ugh. Oh, man. I'm so sore. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. You guys ready to pray? Okay, pray with me. 9-11 every day, okay? Stop what you're doing. Take a moment. Seek God out for some divine intervention in our world. That's what we're doing, okay? And then we are going to find somebody to raid. So you can help me with that. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Dear Lord... Thank you so much, God, for such a wonderful conversation today, for an incredible study as we got to dive into your word and, and, and discuss how we can grow and how we can, how we can grow closer to you, how we can grow as people, how we can grow in your plan, how, how to hear you clearly. God, such a, such an incredible conversation and a wonderful reminder for all of us and maybe a learning experience for some. Um, God, just thank you so much for everything that we've gotten to go through today. And I just pray over the rest of our day that we, that we take what we've, what we've learned and take what we've been reminded of and, and carry it with us throughout our day today. And God, I just lift up our nation. I lift up our world and, and everything that is going on. Our world is so broken right now, so broken and so hurting. And God, I just, I just ask you to just reach in and just, just, Man, clean out our hearts, soften our hearts, clean out the muck, clean out the, break down those walls that we build and help us to just love people better the way that you call us to love people. Help us to go out and share your truth and your love in the ways that you call each of us as individual children of you to do. God, help us to hear you clearly and help us to have the courage to be obedient to your call. God, help us to be the difference that we need in the world right now. Help us to make the changes that are needed right now in ourselves and around us. God, remind us that it starts with you and then it starts with us. But we can only be changed through your power and your glory, God, and it is for your goodness. And God, just help us to, to desire you more. Help us to hear you more clearly and help us to, to just continue to seek you out every single day, each and every one of us. Help us to share your truth in the ways and the spaces that you call us to. God, just thank you so much for the mission that you have given each and every single one of us. Thank you for this great commission that we get to be a part of. And God, thank you for all the wisdom and guidance that you provide for us every single day. God, I just ask that you continue to please provide us with your wisdom and your guidance and help us to help us to do our part to heal our world right now. God, thank you so much for everything you have in store for us. I know that you have a plan, God. Help us to remember that you are in control, that you have a plan, and, and everything will work out for your good. God, just thank you so much for everything that's ahead. We don't know what it looks like. We don't know we don't know what's gonna happen. We don't know what the time frames are going to be, but you do. And God, I just thank you for that. And I just trust you that whatever you know is, is going to be good and right for your kingdom, for your glory, that, that it will be done. 
and help us to be the part of it that you call on us to be. God, just thank you so much for all that you do, all that you've done, all that you will continue to do for us. God, just thank you so much for all that we have, every blessing that you provide, every talent, every skill, every resource. God, I just pray that, that we remember to glorify you on all of it, that we be generous with our resources, that we be generous with our gifts, with our talents, that we love people the way that you call us to love people. God, truly just thank you so much for everything that we have. God, just thank you so much. Help us all to have grateful hearts, grateful, generous, loving, kind, patient hearts. For your glory and your kingdom, help us to just seek after you with our whole self. Lord, just thank you so much. In your name, amen.